house of the Lord, to be in the land of the living. Come on, give God a hand praise. Wave your hand. Show him that he's worthy in your own way. You don't have to do it my way, but do it your way. He's so worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Did you hear me? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Without him, we can't do anything. It is he that brings us joy. It is he that brings us peace. And oh, how we love him. Father God, Lord, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for who you are in our lives, Lord. You are such an awesome God. You are worthy God. You're a holy God. You're a mighty God, Lord. And we come together, Lord, to lift up your holy name, God, for you are worthy. Lord, we set aside anything that's going to get in the way of us worshiping you. You say that we that worship him should worship in the in truth, spirit, and in truth. Lord, you've done too much for us not to worship you. You've done too much for us to not to give you praise. Yes, thank you, God. Through this pandemic, through the struggles and the trials and tribulations in our lives, Lord, you are worthy of all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We give you honor. We give you praise today. Come on, give him a hand, praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. You make me happy, yes, you make me whole, you take the pain away, I'm so in love with you. <laughs> you make yeah. me happy, yeah. Yeah. you make me whole, you take the pain away, I'm so in love with you. You make me happy, Tell them. you make me you whole. Make me whole. Can you make me whole? You make me whole. You take the pain away. I'm so in love with you. And everything.
Oh, no. 
Oh! 
sing one more time. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, give it to him.
love Jesus today? Does anybody here love him today? <laughs> Listen, I don't know what you came to do today, but I came to give God praise. And I'm not going to be ashamed to praise him. I'm going to praise him while I have the chance. While I have breath in my body, air in my lungs. Like Paul said, I don't mind being a fool for Jesus because he hung on the cross and he bled and died for me. And he said, it is finished. And when he said it's finished, I knew the blood applied to me. Oh, you ought to apply to yourself today. Amen, amen. Lord, I love you more than anything. More than anything. There's a lot of things that compete for our attention, but can you really say, Lord, I love you more than anything? <laughs> I'll give you worship and I'll give you praise because I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Listen, you may be seated. You know, I'm not going to force y'all to do something you don't want to do. But I'm going to take my time and just give God praise because he's been so good to me. He has been so good to me, y'all. He has. And listen, it ain't just about me, but he's been good to us. Amen. I look around and I see that you all are looking blessed and looking highly favored. Amen. Grace is looking good, and that's nothing but Jesus. Amen. It ain't because we good, it's because he's good. Amen, somebody. And he deserves all of the honor and praise. Listen, I want to thank our praise team this morning. Amen. for doing a fabulous job. Amen. I want to thank our band as well for doing a fabulous job. Thank our guys in the sound booth, our video guys, for doing a fabulous job. Shout out to our health unit for doing a magnificent job, amen. Listen, I just say this every Sunday, and you know it, but these guys have been here week in and week out. Amen. Week in and week out. All throughout this pandemic. Amen. And they did it because they love Jesus, and they love Grace Bible Church. And I want to celebrate that fact, amen. Amen. They love Jesus and they love Grace Bible Church. And listen, I love you guys. I do. I love you. It's so good to be here with you this morning. Amen. Good to see your faces, partial faces, but it's good to see you. I can see in your eyes that you love Jesus. Amen. There's a twinkle there. Amen, somebody. And I thank God for you. Listen, today we're not going to keep you long. I know I say it every Sunday. I'm, I made a pledge today that I'm not going to keep you long today. Uh, but I do want to testify First and foremost, especially before these guys leave, I want everybody to hear this testimony. And so I'll start off with saying this weekend, my oldest daughter graduated uh, from college. She graduated. Amen. But that, that ain't the real testimony. I mean, yes, she graduated. But the real testimony is she graduated from the University of Missouri uh, in Columbia. And I, and I say that because when she initially apply, applied out of high school, to the University of Missouri Columbia, they denied her acceptance. They said she wasn't ready for college. They said her academic record did not uh, move them to accept her to the University of Missouri Columbia. So you know what she did? She went to another college. And she went to that college and she eventually graduated with an associate's degree at that college. And she applied to the University of Missouri Columbia again. And she got accepted. And yesterday, my baby who was discouraged about going to Mizzou walked across that stage with all the other cum laude's, but she walked across, help me laude, I don't know if anybody can praise with me today or not. And I just want to testify that he who has begun a good work in you, oh my goodness, shall perform it until the end. Don't give up and don't give in. Because if you keep your hands in his hands, brothers and sisters, you will win. You ought to look at your neighbor real discreetly and covertly say to them, you a winner. You a winner. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. That's the wrong neighbor. That was too secret. You need to tell your other neighbor, you a winner because Jesus has already paid the price for you. Amen. Amen. And you know what? And along that same testimony, and not, and not, not denigrating any of them other children that I have because they all doing a fantastic job. I got this big, strong young man right here uh, who is also doing a fantastic job. But listen to this. The same guy who went to Normandy High School that they told really don't need to go to college, but should probably go to trade school or learn how to do something with your hands. Let me tell you about him. <laughs> he graduated from Lincoln University with a bachelor's degree. With honors. <laughs> he graduated from Regent University Divin Divinity School with a master's degree. Watch this. He also graduated from Webster University with a master's degree in business management. Watch out. And God opened the doors for him to go and start a doctoral program at Bethel Seminary in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, let me tell you what God can do. God can take that young man, who is me, by the way, and move on him, who really did not know how to do no math, didn't hardly know how to do nothing, no social studies. I could play football. Y'all ain't gonna talk, right? But God blessed me to be able to do something that I could not do in the natural. But he did it for me. Well, Pastor, why are you telling us all this? I'm telling you because I want you to be encouraged. You got enough people in your life telling you what you can't do. Come on. You got enough haters in your life trying to keep you down. But I ain't come to hate on you today. I came to brag on Jesus and to tell you about somebody that if you put your trust in him, that you can do all that he has called you to do. I'm not talking about a few things. I'm talking about all things are possible to him that believeth and puts their trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel real good this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think, we serve an abundant God, a God who is more than enough. You're trying to barely make it. God wants to change your mentality and let you know that he is a God who does exceedingly, abundantly and above all your imagination can imagine. Hallelujah. Amen. Five of y'all got that revelation. Amen, somebody. Somebody's going to put that into practice in their life, and you're going to see what God really can do. Amen? Amen. Listen, let me just jump into this text because... I don't want to be belabor the point and drag y'all out, amen. But I just wanted to tell you what Jesus can do, amen. amen. On that same vein, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Same vein, same vein. We're going to talk about Paul and his boasting this morning. Amen. I know I got some Bible readers in here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you straight. I ain't going to hoop and holler too much, amen. I know y'all. Y'all sophisticated. Amen. <laughs> we all sophisticated, you know, we, we do. Sometimes the spirit just moves on you. You lose some of your sophistication, you know. <laughs> you know how it is. Amen, right? David did that too one time, and they looked at him crazy. He was dancing so hard before the Lord. They say he had a wardrobe malfunction. Amen. Now, I'm not asking you all to dance that hard before the Lord, but at least make a joyful noise. Come on, somebody. At least clap your hands. I mean, you know, you can, you can clap dignified, but, you know. You don't have to be wild. You don't have to do all that. You can clap dignified for Jesus. Amen. Because he has been good, y'all. I mean, it's really hard for me to, to move on because he's been really good, y'all. I mean, really good. I look across the horizon and I see some terrible stuff. But then I look in here and I see you all and I'm like, man, God has been good. He's been good, y'all. We still eating good. Oh, my goodness. We still dressing good. Some of us smelling good, looking good. Man, God has been good. 
I don't even know how you can just take it without just hollering a little bit. I mean, my goodness. Amen. I'm, I want to go on, but I, I'm having such a hard time, Brother Rich. I, because I know that if I came in here and announced that one of y'all was the winner of the Powerball. Somebody who had that number would lose some dignified sophistication. A amen. Maybe some of y'all wouldn't, you know. You get a hundred million, you like, yeah, yeah, no biggie. I'm glad you got it like that. Amen. And as you, can you see me in the coffee shop if you do have it like that? Amen. Because we got some projects that we need fun funding for. Amen, somebody. But I'm telling you, man, if I won the Powerball, I wouldn't be like, oh, Powerball? Yeah, hundred million. I'd be like, are you serious? <laughs> Check them numbers. <laughs> and, so, and so that's how excited I want us to be about Jesus. Because he's done bigger than that, y'all. I mean, that's nothing. Amen? Not only did he help us financially, he saved our souls. He, he did something for us that money can't buy. Amen, y'all. He took your raggedy life and he gave you a new life. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. Good Lord, I'm just, let me, I got to move on. But it's hard to move on because I get these visions of him hanging on the cross and them nailing spikes in his hands and in his feet and then jamming a crown of thorns down on his head. Now we're talking about the king of kings and the Lord of lords who could have just said, Lord, send these people down, wipe these people out, get this stuff up out of here. But he didn't. He hung there in humility and humiliation so that we could not have to hang there. He did it because of us. They beat him. They beat him beyond disrepair. He, they didn't even know who he was. They beat him so bad. They ripped his beard out of his face. Then they stabbed him in the side and mocked him and gave him some vinegar to drink when he was thirsty. He could have easily said, Lord, destroy all these pagans and a whole lineage and every one of them that came after them. He could have. But he looked up toward heaven and said, Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. And the Bible tells me that he eventually said, it is finished. And the big, heavy, thick veil in the temple was ripped in half, and saints got up out their graves. <laughs> the sun refused to shine, and darkness was everybody, everywhere. And even a pagan said, surely, surely this must be the Son of God. A pagan who didn't even know Jesus got up out of his seat and said, surely I'm going to be a witness and let you know. Man can't do this. This is the son of God. Brothers and sisters, because of that fact, you and I can sit here and stand before that king and plead our case and leave all of our cares and all of our concerns and all of our worries at the altar and be imputed righteousness by a holy God. Isn't that awesome? That is something to celebrate. Amen. 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 Let me get to the text. Amen. I, I, I tell you what, I'm just in love with Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 12. <laughs> and it reads, I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. I'm going to read 10 verses so you don't have to stand. Uh, if you want to stand, you can. You're please welcome uh, to. They're going to put it up on the screen. Yep, they put it up on the screen. It says, this boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up in the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside of my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and I heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things that no human is allowed to tell and that experience is worth boasting about. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm only gonna boast about my weaknesses. 
If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh. A messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And the church said, amen. 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 What a wonderful word from the Apostle Paul here. Listen, I know all of us, uh, we don't like being weak and we don't want to feel weak. We don't like weakness. Our culture denigrates weaknesses. Amen. Oh, our culture says you got to be strong. You got to go get what you want. You got to take it. Only the strong can survive. Dog eat dog, right? Our culture teaches us that to be weak or to be humble uh, is less than. Culture tells us to boast and brag about who we are and pull ourselves up from our own bootstraps. Our culture tells us that we are self-made, rugged individuals. And we eat it up because we like how it sounds. We like how it makes us feel when somebody recognizes how good and how great we are. And we say, yes, I've been working hard at it. Amen. I come from good stock. I come from a good family. My family, we ain't never done none of this. We ain't never went to jail. My family has always been about education. Our family's always been on the front lines. I'm from good stock. We celebrate that. And we try to look for mates for our kids from that good stock. Amen. But as soon as one come along who ain't doing that, we like, oh, Lord, here comes some trouble. Here comes some trouble. Look at him. Oh, I know where his family from. I've seen him in action. And before they even speak a word, we've already judged them and summed up who they are and what they're capable of. But let them come in and say, yeah, I drive a brand new BMW. I have a six-figure salary. I graduated from an Ivy League school. My parents own stock in some of the largest corporations. And when I get my endowment and my inheritance, I will be a multimillionaire. And I came to date your daughter. Most fathers would be like, yep. <clears throat> The door is open for you, young man. <laughs> and many of them, many of them would never ask the question, do you know Jesus? Do you know him in the pardon of your sins? Have you surrendered your life to him? And has he broken you from your pride? No. We much rather hear him be financially independent. We much rather hear about his financial portfolio and his exploits as an uh, academic uh, young man. We much rather hear about all of those things, especially so he might tell you he just got drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. Why? Because in our culture, we are proud of those things. Amen. Even so, even so, and let me just get on this just for a few minutes and, you know, I'll get some critics, but it's, it comes with the territory. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And in our culture, uh, in America, uh, we as African Americans uh, did not get a head start. Amen. Matter of fact, we got held back. While everybody else was running, we was off doing something else. Amen. And when those systems were set up in this wonderful country of ours, America, uh, all of these liberties and all of these freedoms were not given to African-Americans. Amen. 
And to be even honest, they weren't even given to white women. You got quiet on that one. Because the power structure was set and we did not want anything interfering with that power structure. Oh, yeah. And as we continued on and we went further west, we took lands that didn't even belong to us. <laughs> and we felt good about it because we put those people on patches of land that we said was were, were safe for them to be on. And then we did all of this in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I feel like I'm in trouble. And we said to justify that these people don't know Jesus. They're really savages and we're helping to civilize them. And then as we give them Jesus, we can integrate them slowly into our society. And out of that, brothers and sisters, was born this rugged individualism, this pull yourselves up by your own bootstraps that we celebrate, even, even missing the fact that somebody else cleared these fields, somebody else picked this cotton, somebody else planted this stuff, somebody else took care of your baby, somebody else built all of this stuff. And now that you done got rich off of all of other folk labor, you want to now somehow look at them and say, maybe you just just inferior. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> we're a bunch of malarkey. You know I'm going to keep it 100. What a bunch of malarkey. But the delusion is I am strong. That's why I have what I have. You are weak. That's why you have what you have. Are you hearing me today? And we believe this lie because it fits our narrative. And watch this, watch this. We also then turn and believe the lie of a victim because we have seen exactly what they said come to pass in our life. <laughs> and instead of leaning on our hope, we try to identify with and imitate our oppressors who said they did it on their own. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I didn't really come to stir up the pot too much, but I wanted to let you know that as soon as you start to think that you are strong, you eventually abandon the resource that got you to the place of strength that you're in in the first place. And I don't claim to be a prophet, but I do claim to be a prophetic preacher. And the spirit of Lord has shown me that America will be judged for her resistance to continue to rely on the spirit of God. And because we have gotten so arrogant in our success, we have failed to give praise and honor and credit where it is due. And I guarantee you, when judgment comes, we will look up and we will recognize that there is no other hope except to hope in Jesus. There is no program that is going to be able to rescue America from the impending wrath of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I promise you this, and I speak to you plainly and clearly, that God is not pleased with our arrogance. He is not pleased with our flipping ability to say that we have all of this stuff because we have been honored and favored by God and never recognizing the blood and sweat and tears of those who have toiled before us and built the foundation that we now stand on. Do you think that God is mocked? For whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. 
that is individually and that is collectively, my brothers and sisters. So hear me, do not be fooled with this false idea of individualism. Do not be fooled with this false idea that if I assimilate and I emulate those who now seem to be rich and seem to be successful, do not be fooled. There is a time and day of reckoning coming and you don't want to be included in that group. Hear me when I tell you, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. But what are you saying, Pastor? Can, can you get to your text? Because we text with people. I'm so glad you asked. I'm so glad you're saying that. Look, 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 look at what it says here. He says that the grace that God has is sufficient for me. In other words, God says, I am all of the grace that you need. Watch this. All of the grace that you needed before, all of the grace that you need now, and all of the grace that you'll ever need in the future. My grace is sufficient. Amen. He says, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Not in your strength. Not, not, not in your individualism, not in your rugged individualism, not in your pulling yourself up from your bootstraps. Amen. See, we celebrate the wrong stuff. Why in the world are we celebrating somebody pulling themselves up from their own bootstraps when you know that that is false in the first place? Somebody had to teach you what a boot was. Amen. Somebody had to show you where your feet was. Hey, y'all ain't going to talk to me. But, one, but once we get to a place where we feel good, we all of a sudden now proclaim our independence. Amen, somebody. Let me give you, let me set this text in this context because if not, you all will see it as a pretext. And so in this context, the Apostle Paul uh, here, uh, he has started these, this church in Corinth. He started it on his first journey to Corinth. And he set it up and he stayed with them for a while. Uh, matter of fact, many uh, theologians say 18 months he stayed there before moving on. But then Paul came back. Uh, and he came back because there was an issue and a problem here at Corinth. The first time he came, the, the issue that he had to write a letter was because uh, Corinth was a city that was on a port, right? Uh, a city that, that was exposed to a lot of other different people, a lot of different uh, religions, a lot of pagans came into Corinth, and they, and they were sexually immoral, and they brought a lot of immorality uh, to the church. And so Paul had to really correct some things uh, as you read through 1 Corinthians. Amen? Amen? I encourage you to read through 1 Corinthians because the church at Corinth was a lot like the church in America. Amen. I know y'all don't want to say amen to that, but it's the truth. But then the second time he went back, uh, there were some other people there uh, who was really trying to straight up uh, go after Paul and was attacking Paul, attacking Paul's pedigree. There were false teachers that was like, you know what, Paul ain't no real apostle. He ain't like the other apostles. He ain't no real apostle. You need to stop believing Paul. Paul talking all this stuff. Don't believe Paul. And, he, and they were going throughout the church in Corinth trying to mess the people up, trying to turn them against the person who planted the church. Y'all ain't going to talk. That ain't nothing like our folk, is it? We don't, we don't never do none of that stuff, do we? We say, no, 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 the preacher's right. The pastor's right. He's right. No, we go behind the back and be like, I don't know what he was talking about last Sunday. <laughs> Girl, he, oh, he need to go back and read his Bible, don't he? <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> I do. Matter of fact, I do go back and read it. I go back and listen to them sermons and I cringe and I be like, Lord, did I say that? <laughs> say, can you sit me down, Lord, and tell me to stop preaching? He said, no. Mm. Keep on preaching because somebody got something out of the preaching. Amen. <laughs> he said, my word don't go out and come back void. You just keep on preaching. <laughs> Amen. They might not like your style. They might not like the way you dress. Perhaps some of them might even say, you ain't even no real pastor. 
She said, don't worry about that. Just keep on preaching. Amen. <laughs> Preach in season. Preach out of season. <laughs> Preach when they say an amen. Preach it when they give you the side out. Just keep on preaching. Amen. And, and so here's Paul. But Paul said, you know what? I got to take a second here. Because these people are attacking me personally. And not only attacking me, they attacking my calling. And they dividing up the church. Oh, yeah. You know what happened when we start dividing up the church, right? You know God ain't pleased with that. Some of you, I know y'all know that. You coming in trying to sow some seeds of division? Girl, uh-uh. We need to go do such and such, cuz. I don't like how that's going. Come on, go with me. We're going to go over here to this church. We just, we'll be back. We're just going to go check them. See, nothing but trying to divide up the people of God. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. Amen. Y'all want me to read it? <laughs> That, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Listen, you can go back and look at chapter 11. I encourage you, go back and look at chapter 11. They dogging Paul. And Paul comes back and says, hold up for a second. Just hold up for a second. All y'all dogging me? He says, look, look here. And, and he didn't even say himself. Now, the New, Living, the New Living Translation says, I, Paul. But if you read the other translations, he's alluding to who that person was that was caught up into the third heaven. Y'all ain't going to talk, right? He says, listen, he, he was caught up into the third heaven. Had visions that I can't even talk about. In other words, I know my calling. I know who I am, and I know who called me. And, and God knows me. Y'all ain't going to talk. And he goes on to say, uh, uh, listen, listen, this experience is worth boasting about, but I ain't going to boast about that. I'm going to boast about my weakness. I'm going to boast about what I'm not. I'm going to boast to you to the fact that I am jacked up. Come on. <laughs> he says, and I even went to the Lord and told him, Lord, get rid of some of this jacked up stuff about me. Matter of fact, here's one thing. I got this thorn in the flesh. And Satan gave it to me. He bothered me. Lord, take this away. And I went to him at least three times and asked him to take it away. And guess what? He didn't take it away. He turned around and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient, right? Now, I know many of you all are hearing that thorn in the flesh, and we know what a thorn is. So you look at a thorn on the rose bush, the first thing you think is, oh, that's just a thorn. Yeah, I know it hurt. Yeah, prick you a little bit. Thorn, right? But if you actually look up this, this word here in the Greek for this thorn, it actually is translated stake, like big nail. Amen. Paul is saying, I got a big nail in my flesh. And it's bothering me, and I know it's from the devil. It's bothering me, and it's messing me up, and it's, it's not allowing me to truly be who I can be. I want to be all that I can be. But this, this big nail keep on stabbing me and messing with me, and I really can't be all that I want to be. And so I asked the Lord, Lord, please take this away. Take it away. Take it away, Lord. It's keeping me truly from being all that I can be. And, and God lets him know. He says, no, 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 Paul. No, this is keeping you from becoming proud. This is keeping you from becoming independent. I-N-D-E, well, you, know, you know the rest, right? This is keeping you, Paul. From becoming that. Because when you become that Paul, that's when you're going to fall. It's my message to the church and to America. We got preachers flying in big time business jets and wearing $3,000 suits and $5,000 tennis shoes and making it all about them. When are you going to recognize that big nail in your flesh that is keeping you humble? If you don't recognize... You don't check yourself. The old secular song says you'll wreck yourself. And it lines up with the scriptures. Because pride goes before fall. So listen, brothers and sisters, I just got a couple points, and I'm really running over my time, and I'll get out your way. Uh, first point is the Christian life uh, is not devoid of problems. God don't give you a get-out-of-jail-free card from all suffering and pain. Amen, somebody. He could if he wanted to, but imagine if he did. Half y'all wouldn't be in here today. Amen, somebody. 
If God gave you uh, the, 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 the exempt from pain and exempt from suffering and the exempt from sickness and the exempt from disease, you wouldn't come to church. And you wouldn't pray. Amen. You, you might pray when you remember. But if you had everything you wanted, everything you needed, no aches and no pains, and you just sailed through life, what is what you praying for? Amen. You got the boat that you want, the vacation house on the lake that you want, and Sunday is prime time to go. You'd be on the lake. And some of you are, well, not every Sunday pass to see. You know how you send that tax pass, so we love you, but we're going to be with the family on the lake this Sunday. We'll watch the live stream. God bless you, right? Now, I know some of y'all looking at me like, what's wrong with that? See, I know, I know. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's good for you to get away with your family, amen? But not every Sunday. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Maybe I better preach to the folk over here. <laughs> because, because we owe everything to the Lord. Amen? So the Christian life is not going to get you out of all problems and all, all of those things. Sooner or later, you're going to have some issues. Sooner or later, you're going to have some problems in your life, right? Sooner or later, the enemy is going to come after you and mess with you, right? It's going to happen. But brothers and sisters, we are able to withstand it because we have a friend in Jesus. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. The song says, songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Some of you are looking like, what is that? I know y'all don't know that old stuff, right? <laughs> but that's what a friend we have in Jesus, right? And those songs used to remind me of who he was and who I was. And when trials and tribulations and temptations came in my life, instead of me saying, look, Lord, just get rid of all of it. Make me free. Set me back up. I said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. And I love this line. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. Woo, goodness. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's the solution. That is the solution, brothers and sisters. And we need to go through some stuff so that we can carry it to God in prayer. We need to have some weights on us so that we can unload them at the altar. We need to have the enemy buffet us so that we can recognize and realize that our strength only is in our weakness because that's what God steps in. Amen? Amen. Let me get out the way. Listen, second, second, secondly here. Paul is writing to the church about this thorn, this big nail in his flesh. And he is saying here, uh, this thing is hurting me so bad I want God to heal me. Now, this is not some, uh, this is not a joke. I mean, this is not just some stunt. Amen, right? You know how sometimes we read the Bible and we think that this is just, oh, God's just giving him a little test, right? No. <laughs> this was a real deal for Paul. And Paul was visibly upset about it and had been upset for a while. That he would actually go to the Lord and say, Lord, please, please remove this. Amen. And God didn't. So I really came to preach some of y'all that are asking God to get rid of the big nail in your flesh. Amen. I, I'm telling you, for a whole month, a whole month, I was battling sciatic nerve pain in my hip, in my leg, and in my back. And every day, every night, I'd be like, Lord, please, 
Jesus, Jesus, please, please get rid of the pain. If you could just get rid of it for one day, let me have one day without this pain. Amen. I got to that place, and every day I got up. Sometimes in the middle of the night, that pain was still with me. No matter what kind of pain pills I took, it was, it was still there. But you know what I noticed over that month? I prayed more in that month than I prayed in a long time, brothers and sisters. I read my scriptures and my devotional more in that month than I've read in a long time. I even started back journaling. This is day 15 of this pain, Lord. I... Amen. I even noticed that my love for my wife increased during that month. Because I'd be like, baby, baby, I'd be sending a text message. Can you get some more pain medicine and help me out? Right? Oh, here, here, here you go. Here you go. And after about two or three weeks, she was like, you, well, you really must be in pain for real because you don't normally act like this. Yeah, yeah. All of these things increase. Why? Because of the pain. Because of the pain. Right? I used to run around and try to do all the stuff that I was doing, squatting, doing heavyweights, chasing after the little boy. I wasn't doing that no more. <laughs> I'd get somewhere and try to sit down, right? Amen. A whole lot of adjustment came because of that pain. And now that the pain went away, I could tell even when it starts subsiding. Since the rigs were here, it starts. I was like, whoo. Got a little relief, right? And then when it went down under, under five, I was like, oh, help me hear Jesus, right? I kept saying, next time I go to church, I'm going to dance at church. I'm a... And now, even though the pain has just about went away, I might have a one or two. Guess what I still find myself doing? Thanking God now that that pain is gone. Amen? Do you see how this pain impacted my life because it changed my countenance before the Lord and I recognized I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, blessed Savior. I need thee. Amen. So we need these pains and thorns in our lives. Amen, somebody. I know, I know it's hard to say amen for that one. Yeah, it's still hard to say because we don't like to say that. We're going to be like, oh, Lord, I, if I say that, it might happen. I don't, I don't want to claim that, Lord. Well, let me, let me help some of y'all name it and claim it, folk out. Eh? This won't cost you nothing. This is free. You can name and claim till your cows come home. <laughs> you ain't going to never defeat or beat the sovereign will of God. So... <laughs> So you can pull the, the heavenly uh, slot machine all you want to. You can click your head, heels together 15 times and say money come to you. You can, you can rebuke the devil and tell him to get out your house, out the front door. He's slipping through the back door. I mean, you, you can do all of that. But I, I want to know what you really can do. What you really can do. It's smile sometimes. <laughs> what you really can do is be friendly a little bit. Amen. Pick up the phone, call somebody, and say, hey, I didn't call the woman, I just wanted to tell you I love you. Amen. What you really could do, uh, let me stop, because <laughs> I will get in trouble, right? <laughs> We have much responsibility. Last thing, last thing, Paul's attitude changed concerning this thorn. Uh, this, was, this was the attitude adjustment that Paul really needed. Uh, it changed because of this thorn. Paul really wanted to defend himself here. He wanted, he wanted to make sure that they knew that he was teaching the correct doctrine in the church. But, but, but more than that, in Paul's flesh, he wanted to defend himself. These people are disparaging his name. They're disparaging. They're, not, they're calling him not even a real apostle. They're talking bad about him. Paul wanted to defend himself. And, and, here, and here God left the thorn in his flesh. God did not rescue from it. Even though he wanted to defend himself, God still made him dependent upon his grace. Oh, my 
my goodness. Ain't that something right there? We are ready to defend ourselves when people come at us. Yeah, my God. Amen. Yeah. We ready to defend our loved ones and our family. We, we, we ready to defend Jesus. Like he need our defense, right? We so ready to defend because we want to be right. We, we need an attitude change. Paul's attitude had to change. Why? Because God forced it up on him. Oh, do, do you see that? God put him in a position where he could not escape that thorn. And he told him, Paul, what you're really going to have to do is completely depend and rely on me. Yeah, Paul, I know you're a Pharisee of Pharisees. I know that you're a Hebrew of Hebrews. Paul, I know I know you got all of this training. I know you did all of this. Paul, I see all of the stuff you did. I recognize all that. But you know what, Paul? I ain't got time for that. I need you to stay right here in this humble place so I can continue to use you. And I'm going to keep it right on you, Paul, so that I can continue to use you. You might not thank me now, but you'll thank me in the end. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here. And Paul got an attitude adjustment, and he says, you know what? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to take pleasure in my weakness. I'm going to take pleasure in the insults. I'm going to take pleasure in the hardships and the persecutions and the troubles because I suffer for Christ. And when I am weak, he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Brothers and sisters, we need an attitude adjustment. That attitude adjustment says that the way to go high is to go low. The way to get to the top is to go and get familiar with the bottom. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. The way to be exalted is to humble yourselves before the Lord. The way to be successful in the body of Christ is to love God and love others just like you've been loving yourself. That is the way, brothers and sisters, because God can't use you if you think you all of that and a bag of chips. If you think that you've already arrived, ain't no need of him pouring nothing else into you because you're self-sufficient. You got all you need. But I don't know about you. I don't want to be in that boat because I don't have all I need because I need Jesus. Amen. And I need him every day, every hour, every minute and every second. I need Jesus. Keep me in a position, Lord, where you can use me. Keep me in a position, Lord, where I got to look up and see your face each and every morning. Keep me in a position, Lord, where if I complain, I'm only complaining to you. Keep me in a position, Lord, where I can even get to the place where, say, through trials and tribulations and turmoil, I still won't complain. Because I know that God is on my side. And he might have to take me deep in order to take me high. But for God, I'm willing to live. And for God, I'm willing to die. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this place. Paul had to have an attitude adjustment. The attitude adjustment got him to the place where God really could use him. And didn't he use them, brothers and sisters? <laughs> you look through the New Testament of your Bible and you see letters from Paul all oh, throughout the New Testament. You see him being a witness to the Gentiles. You hear him saying, I want to know the Lord intimately. I just don't want to know about him. Yeah, I studied about him in seminary, but I want to know him. And I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to be intimately acquainted with his sorrows and his grief. Because I know if I'm crucified with him, I'll eventually be raised with him. And the same Jesus who I saw leaving out of this earth, the same Jesus who conquered death, hell, and the grave. The same Jesus is coming back again one day. He's going to translate these lowly bodies into new bodies. And when we see him, we'll see him as he is. And forever we will be with the Lord. i got to get out of here because I'm feeling real happy today. Knowing that our hope is in Jesus. And that hope will not be disappointed or dismayed. For if I put my trust in him and my faith in him, one day, one day, I will rise with him and forever be with the Lord. I got to go. 
Listen, I'm finished this morning. I just want to encourage your hearts. God is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's going to be with you through everything that you go through. So don't be dismayed. Don't get sad. Let not your heart be troubled. Because the same Jesus who has put something in you that seals you even to the day of redemption, he will continue that work in you and you will persevere even to the end. Amen. Listen, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we're going to pray. I'm going to ask those who don't know Jesus, those who are here, those who are watching by social media, or YouTube. I'm going to make just a simple request. And this request is not something that I want you to respond to my voice. But I want you to reflect back as you were hearing the word preached. If God spoke to your heart by his spirit, and you know if he did, if he spoke to your heart, this is the opportunity that he has given you to respond to him in the affirmative. And that response is, Lord, I accept the fact that I am a sinner. I accept the fact that I cannot make it without you. I confess that I'm a sinner, but Lord, I want to turn from that sin today and I want to turn to you. I believe that you raised God. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and I believe that that sacrifice was for me and I accept it today. If that is you, we want to hear from you. If that is you, we want to encourage you and pray for you. And if you're here and that same thing happened to you, we want to encourage you and pray for you before you leave. And so we'd ask that you would meet us in the coffee shop if you're here. Uh, If you want to know more information about the church, we ask that you meet us in the coffee shop. And if you just want to say hi to me and shout out to me, stop by the coffee shop today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for moving by your spirit. We thank you for all that you have done here today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are yet doing because you are never, ever completely done with us in this sanctification progress. Be with us and stand by us. This is our prayer. Allow your face to shine upon us and give us your peace. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people said amen Amen. and amen. Consider yourselves dismissed. Amen. God love you. May God keep you. And may God be with you. Amen. Amen.